Welcome to Nexus Medical Media. In this video, we are going to talk about prematurity. A premature infant is a live infant born before 37 completed weeks of gestation, but after 22 weeks. Right. So in other words, between 22 and before 37, from 22 to a period before 37 is called a premature. About 10% of all births are preterm births, accounting for 15 million births worldwide. Births, births, bet, bet. The likelihood of an adverse outcome increases with the degree of prematurity of the child. Right, so... Let's say a child is born at 23 weeks of gestation, right? That child is at higher risk of uh, developing adverse effects compared to a child born at, let's say, 37 weeks of gestation. The majority of deaths among preterm infants occur during the first week of life because uh, these uh, infants are usually incompatible with the um, life outside the uterus, right? Prematurity is one of the leading causes of deaths um, in the neonatal period, accounting for 39% of deaths and together with birth asphyxia and neonatal infections that will constitute a leading cause of um, death in children under the age of 5 years. The causes of prematurity can be divided into maternal, placental, and fetal, right? Maternal, placental, and fetal. The causes lead to either spontaneous prematurity or indicated prematurity. What the hell is spontaneous prematurity, right? So this is uh, a result of preterm labor, prom, preterm premature rupture of membranes, uh, also known as preterm. Uh, uh, pre-labor rupture of membranes or cervical insufficiency. Indicated the prematurity, right? So this is a result of induction of labor uh, or cesarean delivery for whatever reason. Spontaneous prematurity accounts for 75% of cases, while indicated prematurity will account for 25% of the cases. Prematurity is idiopathic, like we don't know the exact cause in about 40% of the cases. Right, so these are the main causes, maternal, placental, and fetal. Right, let's start with the maternal causes. This will include hypertensive diseases of pregnancy, chronic medical conditions like heart failure, infections, drugs, Maternal illness, for example, chorioamnionitis, polyhydromnios, and gestational diabetes mellitus. Preterm pre-labor, rupture of membranes, or preterm, 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 promnine. Poor maternal health and socioeconomic status can also contribute to uh, prematurity. Uterine malformations and cervical uh, incompetence, these are maternal causes. Next will be placental, and this is actually straightforward. Placental dysfunction, placental abruption, abruptio placenta, abruptio placenta is Latin. Placenta previa, antepartum hemorrhage. Fetal causes will include fetal distress, non-immune hydrops, erythroblastosis, multiple pregnancies. Right. So the degree of prematurity increases with the number of fetuses. Characteristics of a preterm infant. Look at this baby. Right. So you can see it here, but the skin is reddish and shiny with easily seen blood vessels. There is lanugo hair that covers the skin, right? So this is usually seen between the scapulas, like on the back, right? Between the scapula, you see this lanugo hair. Next, we'll go to the limbs, right? So the limbs will be thin and they are poorly flexed or floppy. This is due to 
poor muscle tone. The other thing you can notice on the limb is edema. Right? It's very common. Head size. So the head may be large compared to the body depending on whether there is associated intrauterine growth retardation. Genitals. In males, the testes may be undescended. In females, the clitoris may be large and also the labia minor may be large. Soles of the feet, right? So on the soles, you see few creases on the anterior pad only. Breasts, right? So uh, the breasts are usually absent in premature babies. Right, let's talk about complications of prematurity, right? So the first one is thermoregulation, like there is a disorder in thermoregulation. Because preterm infants have immature thermoregulation because they have very little subcutaneous fat and brown adipose. This play a role in insulation, right? So if they have less this, uh, they are, we can say like, um, like they, they, they get cold easily, right? They need a proper, um, like, um, artificial heating system to make sure that these babies don't die. So I will tell you later how to manage this hypothermia, right? They also have a reduced shivering response. You know, shivering, shivering actually generates heat, but the uh, premature infants, they don't have uh, this response. Uh, next will be respiratory complications. Right. So, surfactant deficiency and hyaline membrane disease due to lung immaturity. Right. So, uh, uh, about uh, like between 24 to 28 weeks, that's when this surfactant will be synthesized. What is surfactant? Right. Surfactant is this substance uh, which uh, reduces surface tension, therefore, uh, uh, like preventing the lungs from or the alveoli from collapsing. Right. So this surfactant is very important. It's produced like uh, if, uh, firstly between uh, 24 to 28 weeks. And then in most babies at 35 weeks, uh, the, the, the surfactant will be sufficient for the baby outside the uterus. So these babies are at risk of chronic lung diseases or bronchopulmonary dysplasia. They also have an immature respiratory center, which results in a periodic pattern of response as well as apneic episodes. Wait, what is apnea? This is an episode of cessation of breathing for 20 seconds or longer. Premature infants are more sensitive to the effects of hypoxia and maternal sedation, right? So this will cause respiratory depression. Okay, next will be uh, GIT complications. Feeding difficulties due to inefficient sucking, swallowing, and GIT motility. And this is more pronounced in infant delivered before 35 weeks of gestation. The likelihood of reflux and regurgitation of uh, feeds and consequently aspiration, right? Because these are uh, like uh, the, the muscles of the pharynx are not fully functional, right? So they cause this disorder. Poor stores, digestion and absorption, right? So storing uh, the uh, essential uh, nutrients that digestion itself even absorption will be a disorder right and these infants are also at risk of developing neck necrotizing enterocolitis abdominal distension due to large atonic bowel this can aggravate feeding difficulties 
immature enzymes leading to milk intolerance right you know those are brush powder enzymes they are immature in uh, premature infants so uh, uh, the basic food needed by the baby is milk so there will be milk intolerance so this baby won't grow okay next let's talk about the liver liver complications hepatic complications right so there is a greater likelihood of jaundice developing in these infants due to immature clotting enzymes and the higher red blood cell count so when jaundice appears in in these um premature infants it also lasts longer than uh than general uh, neonatal jaundice which we'll talk about later there is there is also increased bleeding tendons and this is due to um lack of vitamin k dependent uh, coagulation right so if you know this vitamin k uh, is usually synthesized by the uh, normal flora in your intestine babies in general like all of them it's not um like the they are not producing this vitamin k right so that's why after birth uh, you, you they use an intramuscular injection uh, specific for vitamin k yeah but so here we just mentioned that in premature babies they don't have it as well so no big deal hypoglycemia right so uh hypoglycemia is due to low carbohydrate stores right because you know main store is definitely glycogen right so glycogen is usually stored in the liver right so if you don't have that store if you don't have that glycogen in terms of where you need the glucose there is no source therefore hypoglycemia in the kidneys renal immaturity right so there will be a low glomerular filtration rate and a poor tubular function due to inability to excrete water and solid load the glomerular filtration rate is 0.45 mls per minute at 20 weeks of gestation and about 5 mls at term babies right so you see the difference at 28 weeks it's 0.45 this is very low compared to 5 mls at term let's just say it's at 37 weeks high sodium losses right so the fraction uh excretion of sodium is three to five percent at 33 weeks of gestation and one percent at 37 right so it's high right high sodium losses the maximum uterine osmolarity is 500 to 700 millimoles per liter and again edema is therefore frequent in preterm infants as i mentioned when i talked about the general characteristics remember the limbs right they are thin uh hyperreflexia yeah. um and what and edema there is also increased transdermal fluid loss increased transdermal fluid loss cardiovascular complications so premature infants are more likely to develop patent ductus arteriosus patent means open right so what the hell is ductus arteriosus right so you know like before the lungs mature okay let's just go through this uh, circulation you know it's, it's really cool right so from the um, right atrium to the right ventricle and then the blood will need to go to the lungs but in like in babies like Mm, during intrauterine period the lungs are not functional so blood has no need to go there so it will cross uh from this uh, pulmonary artery to cross onto this aortic artery. this uh the, that um blood vessel is called the patterned it's called the ductus arteriosus so when it's open like if this is after birth it's still open that's patterned ductus arteriosus hematological complication right so the first one is anemia of prematurity right it's very common in our preterm babies it is due to exaggerated physiological factors and a sluggish 
erythropoietic response. Remember I told you about immaturity of kidney. In the kidney, that's where your erythropoietin is produced, which triggers the uh, production of erythrocytes. Right? So if it's not functioning well, then there is anemia. Late anemia occurs with rapid growth and depletion of relatively poor iron and folate stores. Right? I will talk about this later. Vitamin E deficiency may contribute to development of a hemolytic anemia. Right. Next is immature immune system. This will lead to increased likelihood of infections. And there is also likelihood of IgG antibodies uh, from the mother having not have passed to the infant. Okay. So IgG cross the placenta providing passive immunity. Right. So uh, it, Pre, a premature, like preterm baby, maybe the IgG haven't yet crossed to the uh, infant, right? So this infant is not protected from uh, like diseases which usually attack um, the babies, right? So we need um, like mother's immune system to be the first line of defense before we uh, before the infant creates its own um, immune system. Neurological complications, right? First one is birth asphyxia and fetal hypoxia. Intraventricular hemorrhage, right? So this is a constant hazard due to a rich uh, network of unsupported capillaries in the germinal matrix, right? So because of the because this network is unsupported, it just ruptures and causes intraventricular uh, hemorrhage. This risk is worsened by possible fetal hypoxia and birth asphyxia. Periventricular leukomalacia. What is this? This is a form of uh, white matter brain injury characterized by necrosis of the white matter near the lateral ventricles. Next one is retinopathy. Right. So retinopathy of prematurity is uh, related to a high arterial oxygen tension level. Um, initial hyperoxia stunts retinal vessel development, while late hyperoxia stimulates damaging vascular proliferation. Right. And last is increased risk of um, adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes such as cerebral palsy, behavioral problems, sudden infant death syndrome, non-accidental injury, and other social complications such as parental marriage breakup. What the hell? I don't even understand this statement. Okay, let's just go through the neurological complications again. Uh, birth asphyxia and fetal hypoxia, intraventricular hemorrhage, periventricular leukomalacia, retinopathy of uh, prematurity, and increase the risk of adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes. Thank you so much. If you like this video, make sure you click uh, the thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for more. Until next time.